Now, to be honest with you, when it comes to AI, I thought I had seen it all. I mean, you have GPT and chat GPT models out there that basically complete something for you. So if you have a question, they give you the answer to the best of their abilities. When it comes to images, it's pretty much the same thing. You have mid journey stability AI and a bunch of other models that generate images according to your prompt. So it's pretty much the same thing, except it's visual now. And the exact same thing is when it comes to audio you have all kinds of tools that do text to speech they can even clone voices or generate voices from scratch but what i didn't realize before is that you can build some incredibly amazing apps very very sophisticated apps by combining all of this and doing something interesting together so meaning that you can combine generative text you can combine generative audio with generative images and build an incredibly useful apps for instance i just googled to see if there are apps that can essentially generate entire books for you and this is the results that i got and these are open source projects that can generate books for you and so you have all kinds of apps that can generate books and then you have all kinds of apps that can generate images and then you have apps that can combine the two and generate books with generated images now the only main issue when it comes to building these kinds of apps is that you need to be rather technical to make it work these are brand new projects these are open source projects and it's expected that they're going to have some issues there's going to be errors there's going to be bugs so you need to be kind of technical to make it all work but what if i told you that it was a relatively easy and a straightforward way to build an app that combines generative text generative images and generative audio to build something interesting and useful well that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video now before we get started as always all the apps and all the resources that i'm going to be talking about in today's video are going to be available to view and or clone from my patreon page and if you're interested in joining our amazing patreon community you can learn more about it in the link below the video now you can certainly build this kind of an app from scratch but i want to show you a really really easy and a quick way to do it with pretty much no code we're going to be using one of my favorite tools to do just that and this tool is called roi.io now roi has graciously decided to sponsor this video but i've been using roi way way before they even knew who i was or even knew my channel so everything that i talk about in this video is my honest and personal opinion and so what you want to do is you want to head over to roi.io and you want to sign up for your free account roi gives you a very very generous free plan that is more than enough to kind of get started and to familiarize yourself with this application now once you do that you're going to be on a screen that looks something like this now the next thing that you want to do is you want to create a project here okay so we're going to create a project and i'm just going to call it something like this here we're going to select firebase although roi does have plans to support both postgres sql and mongodb we're going to click on continue now in this part we can either select an existing project or we can create a brand new project so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a brand new project here and i'm going to call it prj5 i'm going to click on create a project and now we have to wait a few moments while roi creates this project for us now as you can see roi has finished creating a project for us we're going to click on continue the next thing that you want to do is you want to enable authentication for your project so you're going to click on this and you're going to get redirected to your newly created firebase project you're going to click here and the next thing that you want to do is you want to enable one of the providers here we're going to enable this provider click enable click save next you can go back to roi and click on verify here and it's telling you that firebase authentication is enabled we're going to click continue and roi is telling us that nicely done you've created a new project we're going to click here and we are redirected to roi now roi is very very powerful and the best way to kind of familiarize yourself with this app 
is to check out some of the templates that they have here. So you can create a table from scratch, but the best way to understand it is to look at the different templates that you can essentially create. And these are essentially mini apps. Okay, so when you use a template, you're pretty much using an app that Rowie has built that you can customize. And this means you do not need to write any code at all. Now, Rowie has different templates that do different things. So here you have an avatar trainer, you have document AI expenses, you have an Emojify, parallel GPT, and all kinds of different templates. And I actually made videos before talking about some of the different apps that you can build with different templates and different functionalities and things like that. And you can check out my channel for some of these different videos. But in today's video, I want to focus on this template right here called Storybooks, which is a very, very interesting app that you can build and believe me after you finish watching the video you're gonna have a ton of different ideas of different apps that you can build because that's exactly what happened to me i looked at this template i thought to myself okay this is a relatively simple app it's not a big deal but then when i built it i thought to myself man i can do so many interesting things with this app okay so the next thing you want to do is you want to click here and you can essentially preview this template. Okay, so you can see on the left hand panel here, uh, create custom storybook apps using OpenAI for generating custom story combined with Stability AI API for generating images for the book pages. Okay, and this is an incredible template because essentially this allows you to create an entire book along with images and even with audio if that's what you want as well. So here you can explore a live demo. So if you click here, what you're looking at is you're looking at a table with different rows and obviously different columns here up on top. And each row is another book. Okay. So every row is a separate book and you kind of, you can customize it a little bit so you can, you know, tell it what kind of book you want it to write, what you want the book to be about, things like that. And it goes out and essentially creates an entire book for you along with the images and even with the audio. Okay. So if you scroll down, you can see that we have the writing style, Dr. Seuss, you have the prompt here and everything else is generated. So essentially the only thing that you need to do is you need to specify the writing style and you need to give it an, an initial prompt and it's going to generate everything else, which is insane, which is absolutely insane. And then a little bit later in the video, we're going to jump into Flutterflow and I'm going to show you how you can build an app that actually displays this book. So basically how you can build an ebook essentially that loads up this book and shows it for your customers or for your readers and so this is an incredible app idea that you can take in so many different directions okay all right so now that you familiarize yourself with this template let's click on use this template here and now we need to set up cloud functions okay so we're going to click on this we're going to click on continue now the next thing that we need to do is we need to click here and we need to change how our project is built. So right now this is a spark plan, no cost, zero dollars a month. And so what you want to do is you want to click here and you want to select this plan right here. This is a blaze pay as you go plan. And believe me, unless your app goes viral, unless your app, you know, becomes super duper popular that everybody is using it, uh, you won't have to pay even a penny. Okay. So we're going to click on continue and I'm just going to set a budget of $10 a month and I'm going to click on purchase. And so I'm not being billed or anything. This is just an upgrade to a different plan. Okay. Next, you're going to go back to row and you're going to click here. And now it's telling us that billing is enabled. We're going to click continue. And now we need to deploy Rowy Run. And this is essentially the app that Rowy built, which does all the fun things, such as book generations and all kinds of different things. Here you want to select the region. I typically select US Central. I'm going to click deploy. And here we need to wait a few moments for it to finish processing. All right, and now Rowe tells us that it has deployed to Cloud Run. We're going to click on Continue, and Rowe Run is set up. You can exit out here. And now if you go back to Tables and click on this template here and click on Use the Template, you can actually configure this app, okay? So you're going to click here. Let's begin. Here you can just leave the default settings here. Click on Create Table. Click Next. 
Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to configure our keys. Okay, since we're going to be using ChatGPT to generate the book, we need an open AI key. Okay, so you're going to click on add a key to secret manager. And now you need to find your key. Next, you're going to go to your open AI account dashboard. You're going to go to API keys and create a new secret key. Copy that key and create a record here. So I'm just going to call it chat GPT. And I'm going to paste my newly created key here and click on create secret. Next, you can go back to Rowy and click refresh. And you should see chat GPT record here that you've just created. Select that. Click on set secret. Click on next. The next thing we need is this Play HT API key. Now, Play HT allows us to generate realistic text to speech audio for your stories. Okay. So we're going to click here, go to Play HT. Now, I already have an account here. This is an account that's under the free plan. So I'm not paying anything. So you can just sign up by going to play.ht and you're going to get your key here. You're going to copy your key. And you're going to do the same thing. Add a key to secret manager. Here you can just say play HT and paste the key. Create secret. Next, you're going to go back to Rowie and click on refresh. And you're going to see play HT, set secret. Click on next. And finally, we need our stability AI key. And our stability AI is the service that generates these amazing images for us. And you will see that these images are truly amazing. And so we're going to click here. We're going to go to stability AI. Now, I already have an account. This account is under the free plan. I haven't paid anything. And I have an API key here. And you can create a new API key here. I'm going to copy this to clipboard, go back and do the exact same thing that I did before. Create a new record and say stability AI. Paste this here, create secret, go back, click on refresh and select stability AI and say set secret. Click on next. The next thing that we need to do is we need to deploy these functions. Click on deploy. All right. So it finished deploying. As you can see, it says deployed, deployed. You're going to click on proceed. And here you need to publish these webhooks. And this is a very, very powerful feature of Roy. And I'm going to explain to you exactly what this does a little bit later in the video. And believe me, you're going to be amazed at this feature here. So we're going to publish these webhooks and click on continue. Template installed successfully. Click on finish. And now we have this template installed in our project. And so as you can see, you can create a custom storybook apps using OpenAI for generating custom story combined with Stability AI API for generating images for the book pages. And so here's how it works. Complete backend of a storybook app with both database table and function. For every row created, a story prompt or theme can be added, including if you want to create a story for a personalized character name. Then the rest of the table columns are auto-generated, including story with open AI images, etc., etc., etc. And so let's try creating our own custom story. So we're going to click on add a row. And as you can see, our writing style has been filled in and you can change it to a different ones here. You can also add your own writing style if you want. But what we need to do here is we need a prompt. So I have a prompt here and I'm going to paste the prompt. And what the prompt says is that on a distant planet, a curious alien discovers the power of friendship and saves their home from a looming asteroid. OK, we're going to press enter and the rest of this role should be automatically generated for us. So we're going to wait a few moments here. And as you can see, some of the fields have been generated for us, right? So we have a response. We have a cover illustration prompt. Now this is going to be a prompt for an image that's going to be created automatically. And as you can see, it was just created. So this prompt was generated from this prompt. We also have the title for the book, for the story. We have a subtitle. And we also have pages that were created. And I'm going to show it to you them in just a moment. And then we also have this text to speech feature where you can select in what kind of voice do you want the uh, text to speech uh, being dictated in. And we have a style preset here. This is digital art. You can change it into something else as well. 
Now, if you go to pages and you click here, you will see all the pages that have been generated for the book along with the images. So as you can see, we have eight pages generated along with these images. Now, these images are pretty cool, actually. I really like these images. Very, very nice images. And then for each page, we have a text. We have illustration. This is a prompt for the image. Okay, so typically you're not going to be, you know, showing this. You're going to be showing this text and you're going to be showing this image really really cool right and we can go back and now if you go back you can create a new book you can just add a new row click here and you can have a new prompt so let's say i copy this prompt and i paste it and i say on a distant planet uh, a curious a friendly alien a friendly alien this a friendly alien makes friends with other friendly aliens and discovers new planets okay something like this i'm gonna press enter now i'm gonna wait a few moments and a brand new book is gonna be generated now as you can see it's already generated okay we have the cover prompt as well now the image is being generated as we speak so we're gonna wait a few moments for this image and there's the image there's our friendly alien right and this is the title is the curious alien a tale of friendship and courage okay and we can come here and we have this short story right and you have the images for each of the pages okay you have the text you have the illustration this is the prompt for the images really really nice right now another really really cool thing is that if you change uh any of the fields here it's going to regenerate a new book for you right so if i change the writing style to let's say um dr seuss it's going to regenerate an entire book for me okay if i change the prompt it's going to regenerate the entire book for me so this is very very dynamic and so as you can see it regenerated the image in a different style and it regenerated everything right the adventures of a friendly alien a bedtime story and it also regenerated the pages as well so if you come here you're going to see new images here look at this completely new images because we changed uh, one of these fields, either the writing style or the prompt, or both of them, right? It's going to regenerate a brand new book. Now, let me explain to you how exactly this works inside of Rowie. And then we're going to jump into Flutterflow, and I'm going to show you how you can build an app that essentially will allow your uh, you know visitors your viewers actually read the book and enjoy this ai generated story now inside of roe there are a couple of things happening okay these two fields are normal fields so these are just regular fields uh it's a text field this is like you know a field that you have to pick something uh, from different choices but the magic starts with this field right this field here if you click on column settings and you go to column config, you're going to see that it's essentially making an open AI call and there's the prompt, right? It says here, you're a ghost writer for, and it, um, you know, it gets the style, right? And that first column, and then it says users give you prompts and you write a short children's story. And it also tells chat GPT, uh, what kind of format that it wants the story to be generated in. Okay. So it, it says respond in this JSON format, and this is the response and get. So here is the code, but you don't have to write this code. You don't have to mess with this code at all. It's already done for you. And the next important field is this cover image, right? If you come over here to column config, you will see that there's more code here. And essentially what this code does is it generates the image by using this stability AI API, using the stable diffusion model. And it takes this prompt that was generated for us with ChatGPT, it feeds it into this um, st uh, stable diffusion model and it generates the image for us. And it also generates different pages, right? So you have all of these pages that are generated by the system here. Okay, very, very powerful. But the best part of it all is that this is a Firebase collection, right? This is a collection. This is a collection of documents and this is a sub collection. And so if I go back into my Firebase project dashboard here, and remember, this is the project that we uh, in the beginning of the video that Roe created for us, and I go into build and I go into Firestore database, I should see this exact data here inside Firestore. So as you can see, we have Roe collection here. This is for Roe, but we also have storybooks. So if you click on storybooks, we have two records. 
these are essentially the books right and each record has a pages sub collection and these are the pages right from zero to seven meaning eight pages and then you have all of this information here and so now you can create an app that reads all of this data and displays the book for your users and that is what we're going to do right now and so here i am logged inside of flutterflow and this is a brand new app i haven't really done anything yet and so let's go ahead and configure this app to display the data that we have inside of our firebase account that was uh, graciously generated for us with this amazing roe template so we're going to go in here we're going to set this up to our project id we're going to come here click on this gear icon project settings and this is our project id paste that in here click connect next we need to click on auto generate config files now after you've configured your app for firebase you want to configure the schema here okay so here i am in the schema config and when it comes to the schema we have a a top level collection called storybooks but we also have a sub collection called pages and so we need to configure this top level collection and what exactly do we need in this top level collection well we definitely need the image that was generated for the book so if you take a look at this we have this cover image that's essentially an array with some data inside now in order to configure that inside of flutterflow we need to create a custom data type so we're going to come back here and we're going to create a custom data type create a custom data type called cover image okay we're going to click create now this data type has these fields and right now i'm only interested in this download url field so i'm going to click here and enter download url here and this is going to be an image path i'm going to click on create and now we've created a custom data type for our cover image okay the next thing we need to do is we need to go back to firestore and we need to create our collection okay so this collection is going to be called storybooks we're going to click create and we're going to start from scratch and here what we need to do is we need to make sure that we have access to this cover image okay i'm going to say cover image and the data type for cover image we're going to pick this data type that we created and we're going to pick cover image and this is going to be a list right because this cover image is an array right so that's what we're doing here this cover image is a list of that data type we're going to click here and the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a sub collection okay so we're going to say a sub collection is called pages sub collection of storybooks create start from scratch go back here go to pages and let's take a look at what we have here and here we have this image, which is this custom data type that we've defined before with this download URL, but we also have a bunch of regular fields. So what I want is I want this text field here and I want the image. That's pretty much all I want. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna create a text field here for the text. And I'm also gonna create this image, right? So this image is gonna be this custom data type, which is gonna be the same thing. And we're gonna specify that it's a list. We're gonna do that because it is an array right as you can see this image it has an array of these of these specific data types okay so now that we have our schema configured here what we want to do is we want to make sure that our permissions are set up we're going to come here and we are going to set our permissions i'm just going to make every one and we're going to deploy it all right so we've deployed our new firestore rules so we're all set with permissions and now we can go back inside of Flutterflow and start coding the app. Now, the first thing that we need to do is we need to display all the books that we have here. So we have this column. We can do a grid view here and we can display the images uh, for the books, right? So we're going to come in here, click this grid view and add an image. Okay, I'm going to add an image here and let's configure this grid view here. Maybe one a two by two. That looks good. Remove some of the spacing maybe. And now let's go ahead and configure a data source for it, right? So we're going to click here, do a backend query, query collection, storybooks, list of documents. That's fine. And actually, let's give it a little bit of padding. Okay, that looks good. That looks nice. And let's go ahead and configure the images. We're going to click here, storybooks document. We have this cover image. Click on cover image. We're going to pick here and we want to get just the first item, right? So we're going to get just the first item because if you look at our database here you can see that it's just the first item here we're going to go back here we're going to pick this data structure field download url click confirm 
Okay, now let's go ahead and run this app just to see that it's displaying all the images correctly. All right, and here's our app. And as you can see, books, and we see the two books with the two cover images. So if we go back into Rowie, you can see these are the two books because we have two rows with the two cover images, and that is exactly what we're seeing. So it looks really good. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to make it so that when the user clicks on this, it's going to go to another page. And on that second page, a user can browse that book you can go back and forth and look at different pages and see the image as well as the text so let's let's do that right now we're going to create a new page i'm going to call it book create blank page and on this page what we want to do is we want to pass the parameter of that the book that they click on so if it's you know this book or that book the first row the second row uh we want to know about it right so let's go ahead and create parameters for this uh, second page page parameters we're going to add a parameter and the parameter is going to be book ref and the type here is going to be document reference of storybooks confirm and it's a required parameter because they can't go to this page without the actual document reference so we have this and the next thing we want to do is we want to load that entire book right come in here document from reference storybooks and book ref confirm confirm now we can't display the title because we are not saving that information that's not part of our schema so let's go ahead and add the title it's in this response here right so you have this response data type and then you have a cover data type and then you have the title right there and so let's go ahead and configure this data type right let's go ahead and create a data type for cover illustration subtitle and title let's go back here create a new data type and we're going to call it cover and it's going to have three fields illustration subtitle and title illustration string subtitle string and title string create okay so we have this and now we can create another custom data type that just contains this data type right and then we're going to call it response response and this is going to have this data type called cover this is going to be data type right here. So now we have this response that has cover and that has those three fields. Let's go ahead and create our schema, add it to the schema. In other words, this response, and we're going to say response is a data type of response. And now let's see if we can access that data, if we can access the title. Come back here, we have the page title, click here, storybooks document, response, now we need a data structure field. We're going to get cover, data structure field, and we want the title. And there you have it. That should display the title. Okay. So now we have the title for the book that the user selected. And here what I want to do is I want to display the actual um, information about the book. So on each page, we can display the image and the text and let the user go forward or backwards in the page okay now we need to keep track of the page that the user is on and based on that page get the data for the page okay so let's go ahead and create a state variable here and this is going to be called current page and the default is going to be it's going to be an integer and the default is going to be one because pages start with one right so if you go back here you have these pages here. So if you come over to these pages here and you have an index of one. So they start with one. Okay. So let's go back here. We're going to say one. And another state variable I want to create is the maximum number of pages because we want to track if they can move forward or backwards. So I'm going to say max pages and this is going to be an integer. Now the initial value we do not know we do not know how many pages are created we need to look that up so we're just going to uh, click on confirm here and so we have two state fields we have current page and max pages okay the next thing i want to do is i want to display the image and the text and since we're going to start from the first page we can just start off that so we're going to create an image right here image type and we can also create a text type just below it change this around okay that looks better maybe give it a little bit of padding something like this here we can load the actual page information at column level so we're going to come here add a back and query we're going to do a query collection pages uh we're going to do from variable and we want to get just one document we want to get a single document and we're going to set a filter 
Now the filter can only be set at text and image, but we also need this index. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add that to the schema as well, because we definitely need that. So if we come in here, I'm going to add an index. And what is the index here? Index is an integer, right? It's a number right there. So we're going to come here and say integer. Okay, now we can go back and now we can pull up this information, right? So we have this column here, add a back and query, query collection pages from variable single document we're going to set a filter and let's say i'm going to just put one in there for now just to see if it works okay i'm going to say confirm and now we can set these fields um by the page right but the by the data uh, from the page that we pulled up we're going to click here this pages document we're going to get the image the first item in that uh array data structure field download url so we have the image and this is going to be text come here pages document and text is fine okay oh we need to create a navigation to the second page let's do that go to the home page click here add an action and we're going to do navigation navigate to book pass the id book ref reference okay let's go ahead and see if that works okay so now if you click here we are redirected and we are seeing the image as well as the text and the title of the book from the first page so if we go back to rowie and we go to the pages i believe it's this book if i'm not mistaken and this is the image and this is the text once upon a time on a distant planet far far away right and there you have it so the only thing that's left to do here is to do some navigation right so if they go to the second page we display information about the second page or they go backwards we're gonna go we're gonna display the previous page so let's do that real quick gonna go to the to the book we can even organize it like this and now we want to display some navigation so lots of ways of doing it but i'm just gonna keep it simple uh what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna add a row and i'm just gonna add buttons to it okay Okay, let's go ahead and center this row so this row is going to be is going to be pushed down based on the text okay and so what we want to happen here is that when they click on next we want to specify the page that they're going to right it's kind of like pagination in a way and so we're going to be specifying the next page and so we know which page we are now because of that state variable and so all we need to do is increment it by one and reload the page and in fact, in this case, we can keep the current page as a parameter. We don't really need a state variable for it. Okay. So here's what I mean. So when we go from home page to this, we can pass a page parameter directly and we can just pass that parameter everywhere, incrementing it or decrementing it as it's necessary. Okay. So here we have a book reference, but I'm going to define another parameter called the current page okay so we're going to set it as an integer and the default value is going to be one right because we're when we are initially redirecting it's going to be one but later on it's going to change okay so we're going to pass this current page now on the book page itself what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a filter based on that parameter right so i'm going to come here and i'm going to use this page parameter current page and i'm going to remove the state variable here current page because we don't really need it anymore okay we're just going to pass it up and so this next button what it's going to do is we're going to open it here and what we're going to be doing is we are going to be refreshing that page with the current page incremented okay so we're going to say navigate to and we're going to navigate to the same page we're going to pass the same parameters book ref is still the same except current page is now it's going to be different right current page we need to add one to it right so what, we're, what we can do is we can do a code expression add an argument here add current page as the argument and increment it by one right so this is var one var one is an integer okay no errors confirm and now it's going to redirect the page and increment the value okay so let's go ahead and see if that works okay let's click on the, on, on this book here now we have this book we're going to click on next and now we have the next page the only thing that i would do is i want it to be an instant refresh okay so i'm going to change that real quick this next thing i'm going to click here and instead of default i'm going to do an instant you can even do a slide right slide left if you want that's going to have a nice effect so actually let's try a slide left reload all right let's click on this book here 
click on next okay that's a nice effect i think i'm gonna keep this effect it's a really really cool effect so we have that and the same thing we need to do with previous as well so we're gonna go back here in fact we're gonna copy this action come back to previous open this up paste the action and we're gonna change it so it decrements the value right this code expression is gonna do minus one we're gonna pass this argument okay war one minus one confirm let's go ahead and test this out okay let's click here next previous so it has that same effect we want to change that click here we want to do a slide right go ahead and reload that click here okay here's the app click here previous previous and there you go now the only thing that's left to do is to make sure that they cannot click on previous when they're on the first page and likewise cannot click on next when they are on the last page so let's go ahead and do that right now so for this previous button we can actually disable it right there's button disable options click here and we can disable it when the current page is one because there's nowhere else to go before that so we're going to click here create a condition single condition and the first value is going to be current page we're going to set it to one equal to specific value one okay and that should disable it let's go ahead and see if that works okay here's the app click here and as you can see you can't click on previous you can click on next but previous is disabled now you can click next here and now you can click on previous previous and now you can't click on previous and the same thing we need to do with next now and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pass to the second page the number of pages uh, for that specific book that the user chose and that way we can compare whether they are on the last page okay so here is our main page and what i'm going to do is i'm going to load up the number of pages for this book here i'm going to do a back end query i'm going to do a query collection we're going to do pages the value set is from variable and we're going to pick this variable here this reference that the user chose we want to get the list of documents here and click on confirm now we have that value there okay and to this page we want to pass another parameter which is the total number of pages i'm going to add a parameter here max pages or just num pages this is going to be an integer okay it's also required and now we can come back here and we can pass another parameter num pages click here we have this page document we can just pass number of items okay so now every time they click on something it's going to pass the number of items uh to the actual page where they're you know listing the different pages of the book now on the actual detailed page when they are browsing from previous and next we also need to be passing out that variable because we're going to lose track of it okay so if you check out this button here this button is going to be passing that variable so this non pages needs to be passed we have it here and we have it here as well okay so now everything is fine and we can create the condition for next so they do not go over which is nowhere right into the abyss so we're going to come here go to our button disable options and we want to disable this button when the current page is equal to or greater than the number the max number of pages okay so we're going to create a single condition come here current page and we're going to say equal greater than or equal to from variable num pages okay confirm and let's go ahead and see if that works all right here's the app click here we cannot go uh previously but we can go next let's go ahead and go to the last page and this is the last page they cannot go anymore okay this book actually has like six pages so we can do that we can go previous and we cannot go any more previous than that let's check out the second book i believe the second book has like eight pages click here this is the book next pretty cool images i gotta say really really cool images i'm pretty impressed i don't know about you guys but the images are awesome okay so this is the last page and you cannot go anymore okay you can go previous but you can't go anymore now i forgot to tell you about another really really cool part so here we are back in rowie and if you click here you have something called webhooks right and we have four webhooks here and what this allow you to do is it allows you access to this exact data 
if you do not want to go through firebase so maybe you're building an app somewhere and it doesn't have firebase support or maybe you don't really want to you know do it through firebase you just want to use apis so you have get stories get story get story page and create stories so if you want to use any of these webhooks all you need to do is click this and then you can essentially execute this webhook and get the data so here i am using rapid api for testing and obviously when you're building this kind of app you're probably going to be using an api request system inside of whatever you know app tool you're building whether it's flutterflow or something else and so if i paste here the url of the webhook and i execute it i'm gonna get back this exact data here and as you can see it's in json format but really it's an array of objects which is exactly what we have here we have two objects here and that's exactly what i'm getting so i got the title subtitle cover url and the id Pr pretty much all the fields all the data that i need in order to display it or pass it somewhere or do something with it and you can also use all of these other webhooks right so you can do a get story which is going to give you a specific row here you can also do get story page which is going to give you a specific page inside of a specific story and you also have a create story webhook so this is another really really nice feature from Rowy that allows you to bypass dealing with firebase altogether. so you can simply use apis to get this data if you do not want to deal with firebase or maybe the app builder you're using does not support firebase really really cool feature all right so obviously you can take it as far as you want you can change what kind of books you're going to be generating change the images styles change the text styles you know change the ui of this it's really really up to you how far you want to take it but I am impressed with this app. I gotta say, this is a pretty cool app and it's very, very easy and straightforward to do inside of Rowy. And otherwise that would be a, a pretty complex project if you were gonna do it manually or like with code, it would, it would take some time. But with Rowy, it's a lot simpler and easier. And remember, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you guys want to get access to all of these projects and you want to join our amazing community that's growing with each passing day, we've got a really, really great community. You really owe it to yourself to check out our amazing Patreon community and become a member. After all, if you're serious about no code, there's really no other way of going about it. That is an awesome investment and you're going to learn a ton of new stuff get hands-on on this code on these projects connect with other amazing individuals and so with that said i really look forward to seeing you in our amazing community now if you want to see more videos about roe different features different functionality i'm going to have some videos linked right there and you can learn more about this really amazing and incredible tool